Today we're going to explore Luma Labs Dream Machine, which is a powerful AI video platform. I'm basically going to show you how this platform works, but also put it to the test to show you some examples and what you can expect with this tool. Now Luma Labs can be a little bit of a mixed bag. I'm going to show you the strengths of this, probably a little bit later in the video, but first I want to touch on basically how the platform works, but also some of the weaknesses of it. And you're going to see this as I go through. Now you're going to want to head to the website and I have a link in the description below. We click try now and you'll be asked to log into your account. Now you can try this out for free. I have a premium account, but here we have some cards, which is highlighted down the left here. Or if I come down, I can go to ideas, which just has my generations here. If I head back to cards, there's kind of like a little ongoing project. I can see the videos I've created in this project and like the prompt and basically go through and have an area to work on one particular project if I really want to. For now, I'm gonna head over to ideas. And we're going to start off with a simple text to video prompt down here. And starting off pretty basic, I have a woman in a business suit gets her hands up into a boxing stance. Down here, you'll see it says video. We can actually switch from videos to images. We can change the aspect ratio and even choose the video model. Ray 2 being the latest, we're going to stick with that. We stick with 1080p instead of 720p, 16 to 9, so it fits the current video aspect ratio. We can go up 10 seconds, but we'll stick with 5. And I'm going to come down and submit to see what kind of video we can get. And after a couple of minutes, we have our video. And I think that's turned out pretty good. But what we want to do is dig a little bit deeper. Now I want to explore some of these settings, but before I do, I want to be able to compare some of the differences. So what I'm going to do is head over here to the cards area. And you see here, I've already got one card here with two ideas on it. I'm going to come down here plus. Now this can change each time, but essentially it's to create an image, create a video or basically create a style or a character. We're just gonna leave things as they are right now. I'm gonna type in a basic prompt. So the face of a grizzled old man smiling at the camera. I'm gonna add comma because we have a few options here. For one, I can add an image. We can look at that a bit later, but there's also some suggestions here. Now, if you're not good at writing a prompt, you can use these to help write your prompt. So let's say I want a close up. I want it to be photorealistic and I want studio lighting. I can go through and click these and try them out. So now I have these added to my prompt. I can also choose a camera angle or camera movement. So we have handheld, static, a few different ideas. So maybe we say pull out. So it starts off with our guy smiling and pulls out. And just remember you can see what each one does by hovering over it. So you have a few different controls here that you can go beyond the prompt with. Now there is also the option to loop, but we're gonna cover that later because I think we can create uh, a video that's more suitable for that kind of effect. Now again, we have our options. One video, I can change that to two videos to do a comparison if I want to. We're gonna leave it on one for now. Five seconds or 10 seconds, we'll go with five. 1080p Ray 2, which is the latest video model. I'm gonna keep it at 16 to nine and we'll explore some of these other options later. So I submit and now we have our video. However, some reason it starts off with the man and then comes out to him walking. So a little bit, oh, it didn't really work out quite as well as I'd hoped. So what I'm gonna do is I can come up here and you can see I can click on any of these and change them. So I wanna stick with the grizzled old man. I wanna keep the close up shot, pull out. Maybe I'm gonna go with static and it's gonna then create a new video with that option. And this time we've managed to get a much better, more consistent shot by changing it to a static shot. But what's really cool is I can continue to go through and try different things. Now I can simply drag back and forth and see which one's which. I can scroll up and when it's a studio lighting, I can say dramatic low key lighting or soft morning sunlight. So I can try that and then see what difference that makes. And now we have our updated video. We've got the sunlight. It's a different man, but he's also kind of talking to the camera. So I can come down here. I can either extend this video to make it longer or I can go to modify. I click modify and I can describe the changes. So I'm gonna say, man smiles at the camera, then closes his mouth and doesn't talk. I submit. And there you can see it's produced the sunlight, a different man, and <laughs> it's sort of just panned away from his mouth. So. So the text to video can be a little bit challenging. It does produce a good uh, video, but it's just not quite as easy to use as I would have hoped. But uh, I do really like the project workflow and the way that it all kind of strings together. But let's move on and see what we can do with image to video. So I'm gonna head back out to cards. 
And you'll notice it says grizzled expression and it has examples of the videos we've been creating. So that is, that's a pretty cool little bit piece of sort of user interface there. But let's create something different. I'm gonna click plus. Now I can upload images and we're gonna try some of those out. But for now, I'm gonna to go to visualize. So visualize a close-up portrait of a woman in New York, her face illuminated by Bodega lights. So that is now set to video. I'm gonna go over to image. Make it 16 to nine, we can go 1080p or photon. I'm gonna go with photon and yep, 1080p. And we're just gonna produce that image and see what results we get. And now the images we got are these four here. I think this one is probably closest to the prompt. The others are kind of in a supermarket. So a little bit different than what I was expecting, but still it's something we can work with. Again, we can always upload our own images, but for now, if I, I can download this image, I can reference it or I can make a video. So I can click on this, make a video, and it pops up in the start frame. Now, if I wanted to really give it something to work with, I could add one of these to the end frame. But for now, we'll stick with just the start frame and I'm going to type in something like a woman looking around the streets, stressed. We have this image as our start frame and I have keyframe here. So keyframe, one video, all the same settings as before. I submit and now we have our video. And I've got to say, this one looks pretty decent. So she does exactly what we expected her to do. It relied on the image quite well. So, so far, image to video seems to be a little bit more of a reliable process. So once again, I can modify this video, I can extend it. So at the moment, the video goes for five seconds. If I click extend, it adds the video to the start and I can type in what I want to see. Woman stops and starts laughing. So let's see how it handles that at the end of this video. Submit. And now you can see our video. We have the initial video for the first few seconds, but then it stops and she kind of laughs and smiles a little bit like we mentioned in our prompt. So that video extension is actually pretty powerful. But if I click on this video here, I have some of the same options from before, like modify, extend, I can even upscale, but I'm gonna add some audio to see how that turns out. I can add a description. So at the sounds of a busy street, a woman's footsteps and heels and laughter when she turns back. I click create and it will start to create that audio track. And now you can hear it. It has a very sort of raw and very sort of candid sort of feel to it, but it does a pretty good job of adding the audio to that video. But let's head back out and start yet another project. This time we're gonna upload some images to experiment with. I click plus. I then come down to the image icon down here to upload. I'm gonna choose this shot right here, which I generated in mid-journey, click open. And then I'm gonna click on end frame and choose this frame, which I edited in the mid-journey editor. So we've got some slightly different, zoomed out a little bit. She now has a sword in front of her. And one thing to also double check is over here, it says keyframe because that's what I've been working with but it may default to modify, in which case have an image. But I wanna stick with keyframe for now, because I wanna go between this frame to this frame in our video. All the same settings as before, I describe what I wanna see. I have woman smiles and lifts a sword up in front of her, fire blazing in the background. So let's see how well it handles this frame to this frame. I submit, we have our result and <laughs> things are a little bit funny. It's not quite doing what we want it to do. So what if I go back? add a start frame and just simply type in, a woman draws her sword and smiles as a fire blazes in the background. So the prompt is a little bit different, but I have no end frame. So I wanna see what kind of result I get without the end frame. And now we have our video and the girl is turning, facing the camera. However, she's not producing a sword. So what do we do if we want to sort of try again? Well, I can come up here to the prompt and click on the three dots and click reuse message. And this time I can alter the prompt to be a little bit more descriptive. So instead of saying draws her sword, I say draws. So now it says a woman draws a sword and holds it in front of her ready for battle and then the rest of the prompt. So this time when I submit, now this time she turns whilst holding the handle of the sword, but the actual sword blade itself is missing. So this is what I mean by some of the weaknesses of the platform is that it doesn't always give you the movement that you're after. It, uh, it doesn't seem to really want to follow the prompt or it doesn't seem to be as intuitive as some of the other platforms have tried in the past. However, 
The actual quality of the frames and the detail in the character is quite good. The, the jacket looks nice and smooth. The skin tone, she has four fingers. All the details look smooth and look really quite good in the video. Now maybe improving my prompt could fix this issue, but most people aren't brilliant prompt engineers, so the usability is still something to consider. So let's try something different. This time I'm gonna head into the ideas section here and you can see all the videos that I've been able to create and the images. So this time I'm going to click on an image and upload this 3D brain image. And this time I'm going to create a looping video and I want the brain to simply rotate. So I type in, I have a 3D colorful brain, rotates around in a smooth fashion, nifty 3D style animation. I come down, we've got keyframe. We also can try reference at some point if we want to, but it only works on images. So we can see how well it produces that. But let's go back to keyframe. We've got loop selected. We've got 1080p, Ray 2. Let's submit to see what we can produce. And now here is the result. Now we do get this nice looping animation. You may not have noticed the loop just then, or you can sort of really notice it at the end of this here, but it's actually pretty smooth. For creating a nice static looping animation, it's pretty good. But notice how the brain doesn't actually spin. It doesn't turn, it just kind of glows. Once again, having a bit of difficulty getting what I want out of this platform when it comes to movement. So let's move on to something different. I'm gonna show you where Luma Labs Dream Machine actually shines. I've created some videos that have got a lot more subtle movement in them, and this might not suit everyone, but with the level of quality and detail that I think Luma Labs does really well, I'm gonna show you what you can produce and what's kind of like the best use case for this particular platform. Now sticking with image to video, I'm using this image, it's actually the first video I created with Luma Labs, and also I believe it was with one of the older video models. I made this video in mid-journey, and you can see the prompt for the video is a fun-loving dog wearing sunglasses looking around in a dystopian city. And I actually got some nice movement out of that one, nothing too crazy. It's simple, but it just seems to work for that image. Then I tried this other mid-journey image, which I actually tried on my Halo video, and the movement is pretty organic. She just sort of turns and walks off, works out pretty nicely. So I tried this image from Leonardo AI using Flux and just wanted to create a sort of a demon laughing and <laughs> got a bit of personality, the smoke in the background. Overall, I think that's not too bad. And like I said, the detail in the armor, it kind of moves a little bit, but overall still pretty decent. Sticking with Leonardo AI, I've got this Aurora Borealis image I created a while ago, and it did a fantastic job of creating like a time-lapse style video. As you can see, the clouds moving overhead. Start that one again. Nice cloud movement, nice movement with the northern lights. But this next image, which I actually used in another video recently, didn't quite go as planned. There's a ton of movement and animation, and it looks kind of cool, but it doesn't really match the image or what I actually asked the generator to do, just kind of create this cool high movement video. The next example is this Darth Maul video, which is an image I got off Mid Journey, and you can see just how fluid and how great the animation is. The quality of the video is really top notch. Because we haven't tried to ask for too much movement, this is where Luma really shines, is in that more subtle type of movement. But also, while we're here, I can come down and upscale this to 4K. So let's quickly compare to see how they look one against the other. And now we also get this really, really crisp upscale. And I'm gonna zoom in on some of the features so you can see the difference for yourself. And not only is the resolution larger at 4K, which is double that of 1080p, it's also sharpened up some of the edges and pronounced some of the edges so it has that crisper look when you're viewing the full image. So the fact that you can render these and upscale them to 4K all in the one platform is actually definitely one of the better features, I think, of Luma Labs Dream Machine. So to give you my final verdict on this, yes, it does have a little bit of jank to it in the sense that it can be challenging to get the movement you want if there's a lot of movement. The text to video I find is okay. Image to video is definitely where it's at for me personally. I find that just simply having a good image and a good prompt with not too ambitious movement produces good results. Now, a lot of other platforms out there are gonna be able to handle that movement quite well. But like I said, with Luma, I feel like you get one of the, some of the highest quality sort of details in your video. The ability to maintain detail, to maintain textures is really, I think, where the strengths of Luma Labs Dream Machine actually is. So it really depends on what you're looking for in an AI video platform. But before we wrap it up, once again, I'd like to mention there is a link in the description if you check this out, but let's take a look at the pricing. As I mentioned, you can try this for free. There's limited usage, 720p, 
Uh, so if you really want to make sure you're happy with this, I really recommend checking out the free tier. Now, I normally don't like going through pricing because it can change. So make sure you check these prices for yourself. But starting from as little as $7 a month, this is yearly. We switch to monthly, you can always pay $10 per month. And there's a few different levels of plans you can play with. And as soon as you start paying, you do get that Ray 2 access with the 1080p resolution. And you can see once you pay $30 a month, you can use it for commercial usage. And of course, there are much larger plans that you can go for. So anywhere up to sort of like $95 a month, that kind of thing. Uh, however, if you go yearly, there is a creator for $400 a month, so about four and a half grand yearly. So that's a pretty full on one. Uh, but you can see exactly like you've got a lot of different options here. So I do recommend checking it out and having a play with the free tier. See what you reckon, see what you think about the detail and some of the subtle movements and leave a comment below to let me know what you think of this platform. Otherwise, that is the video for today, guys. I hope you found it useful and interesting. And if you did, please consider giving the video a like. Otherwise, I hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.